Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. You know, recently I've been doing a bunch of videos talking about different retrieves that you can use for various baits and how these retrieves will help generate more strikes for you. Most baits, if it's a moving bait, you can generate a strike here and there if you use just a straight retrieve. If you're dragging a bait on the bottom, most dragging baits will generate a strike here and there. But you're missing out on capitalizing on getting more bites if you're only doing that. That's why I'm doing these videos to show you various retrieves that I have used over the years to generate way more strikes than I'd get just on a straight retrieve or a basic drag. So guys, that's what I'm going to talk about today. We're going to do another video. I want to talk about a chatterbait. You know, this is just a little mini max chatterbait. It's gotten to be one of my favorite chatterbait style baits. But a chatterbait's one of those baits that when you talk to anglers out there, it seems like either an angler loves a chatterbait or they're not a big fan of the chatterbait. And when you really dive into each of those anglers, the anglers that are varying up their retrieves are the ones that really truly love a chatterbait. They've untapped the potential of the bait because they're able to use its erratic motion of coming through the water to generate additional strikes. And a lot of times those strikes are big. A chatterbait is a fantastic bait at generating a big bite. If you talk to the anglers that don't really like the chatterbait that much, most of them are just casting and winding. And that's the biggest issue. And guys, I fall into that same category. When the chatterbait face first came out that first year, I wasn't a big fan of it. And it's because I was doing a lot of casting and winding. I really wasn't varying up the retrieve. So I've got several different retrieves that I want to show you that will help you catch more fish on a chatterbait. I assure you guys, if you do this, you'll generate a few extra bites here and there. And by the end of an eight hour fishing day, five extra bites can really make, make a big difference. So let's talk about the chatterbait. We're going to go down to the water. And I'm going to show you the various retrieves that I use and that I know other pros are using to catch some big fish. All right, you can see I've got here the Minimax Chatterbait paired up with a Berkley Boss Grub. One of my favorite combos right there. If you're looking for it, I'll put links in the video description. Uh, all right, so generally speaking, a Chatterbait is primarily used around grass. We all know that it's no longer just a grass bait and it can be used pretty much everywhere. It's become an extremely versatile bait. But still, the primary way people fish it is around grass. And a lot of people will throw it out and then they just, you know, try to straight retrieve it and they're trying to tick it across the top. If they feel a grass, they might give a pop. You know, really, it's just a straight retrieve. The problem with this is they're not coming in contact with enough grass to create enough pops to generate more strikes on the cast. You know, I think most people will say when they do straight retrieve, and they catch a piece of grass and they pop it, that's when they get bit. But if they only do that twice on a retrieve, they're not generating enough potential opportunities to get bit. So the whole idea here is you wanna get your bait caught in the grass routinely on your cast. So what I'll do with this is I'll actually do uh, what I consider more of a feathering technique. So I'm gonna let my bait fall on top of the grass. I'm gonna keep my rod tip up and I'm, I'm pretty much not even gonna reel line. I'm gonna just give it a pop, let the bait fall back down, pop it, and I'm reeling, but really what I'm doing is retrieving my slack line every time I give that pop. So I'm creating a nice quick you know, wrist pop, and then I'm just gonna reel in the slack, pop, let it go down, pop, and it's pretty much the whole way back, I'm just snapping that bait right out of the grass. That's going to give you 15 or 20 really good uh, reaction strike opportunities on that retrieve versus only a handful of them when you're just straight retrieving. <clears throat> so you're just going to throw it out, let it hit the bottom. Here we've got some big rocks, which I almost hit. And you're just going to, you're just going to snap it back. I mean, that's really what you're doing. Every time you feel a piece of grass, you create a, a nice pop with your wrist. And that's all it is to do that retrieve. Very straightforward and simple, but it's one of those ones that you got to think about. You, you know, you, what you'll find is that you'll turn yourself slowly more into a straight retrieve. So you got to be mentally aware of the fact that you are 
uh, need to let it go down, pop it, let it hit the weeds, pop it, let it hit the weeds, pop it. And I'm not giving some crazy wicked, you know, strokes on it. I'm just giving it enough snap to get it to release out of the weeds and not fly out of the fish's range. You know, as long as it's within a few feet of the fish, they have the ability to suck that bait in. So that's, that's the biggest thing I'd say is if you're fishing grass, you want to create a lot of those snapping opportunities. That's how I like to do it. Another one of my favorite techniques, and this is, this is going to be used for fishing deeper or fishing, uh, it works excellent in the early part of the year when you don't have much grass growth. It may only be a couple inches off the bottom, but you cast it out, let it go to the bottom, and then you're going to retrieve it real fast. So you're going to do like five or six super fast reel turns. And then kill it, let it fall to the bottom, and then burn it again. And what you'll find is every time you go to burn it, when you stop, that's when you're gonna get bit or when the bait hits the bottom and sitting on the bottom, they're gonna take it right off the bottom. Let it hit the bottom, burn it, kill it. Hit the bottom, burn it, kill it. And that's all you're gonna be looking to do. That's a really good way to generate those strikes. And it's a, a very much a reaction strike again. The last way, would be if you're fishing, say, riprap like this, but you've got no weed, you've got nothing special, you're fishing a shallow flat, and you've got nothing to deflect off, which is what you do with a chatterbait. You gotta create that own motion. So if you're just straight retrieving it, you're just gonna give it some pops, retrieve it, pop it, retrieve it, pop it. That's what you're gonna be looking at doing the whole way back. And if you're doing that, you're gonna create a lot of different times when the, the bait's gonna freeze, and burst forward. And that's what you need to do if you're fishing, say on riprap or something along those lines, where you don't have the ability to actually come in contact with anything because that's where you get your deflection. So you gotta create your stops, keep it moving, stopping and going, but you really wanna create some of those little pops while you're doing it because that's where your bait is gonna actually jar off to the side versus just if you stop it. If you just reel it, and stop it, reel it and stop it, your bait is just gonna fall right to the bottom. If you actually impart that wrist pop during the retrieve, that bait will dart. And that darty motion is what the fish think is leading to a fish trying to get away from it. So it's gonna eat it at that point. But the key here is no matter what you choose to do, if you're fishing something where you can't come in contact with it, do not just straight retrieve. That is, the, that is your lowest percentage number of bites that you're gonna get. If you impart any sort of erratic motion in that retrieve, you will start generating some strikes. So those guys are the three main retrieves that I utilize anytime I'm throwing a chatterbait. They have really taken a chatterbait from being a bait that I had so little confidence in when it first came out to being a bait I've always got on the deck of my boat now because they generate a lot of bites and the average size that you catch is going to be much better than most other baits. So give them a try. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, we'll have more videos tomorrow.